here to Hastings um, in 2000. And one of the first things that I looked for was a used bookstore because my husband and myself and our daughter are voracious readers and we always traded at a used bookstore as well as a new bookstore but you know traded a lot with a used bookstore and I was amazed when we got to Hastings that there was not a used bookstore there are two colleges here and I just couldn't believe that there wasn't a used bookstore so I took it under consideration and and gave it a couple of years and in the meantime put together just a very basic business plan um, I, I talked about that people will bring them in for trade and the way that works, and it depends on whether it's paperback or hardbound, but my paperback books, I give 25% of the cover price in trade credit. So for example, if someone brings in a book that's marked $7.99, they get $1.99 in trade credit for that book. Um, that's pretty much just overall cut and dried for my paperback books. Hardbound books, it's different, and it's, it's not necessarily set in stone. Generally, it's 10 to 15 percent of the cover price of a hardbound book is what they get in trade credit. But a lot of that depends on the age of the book, uh, what the current market value is. There are some books that I won't take at all if they're outdated. For example, things like diet, nutrition, business, finance. Once they're past four years, I have a really difficult time selling those. So there's a, there's, I could you know, really go into a, a pretty extensive criteria that I have for, for taking books in on trade, but that's just very basic. We start an account for people. They don't necessarily have to use their trade credit the day they come. Well, and their, their trade never expires, so we just start a little card for them. Um, I'm a little backwards on that because I know a lot of people would wonder, well, why don't I have all that on computer? And I actually started out doing it that way and found that it was actually easier to go back to the old-fashioned way of having it on a card, more readily available. I didn't have to worry about something not getting updated properly or losing it or whatever. So um, that's, the, that's the one little old-fashioned trick we still do is we have everything on cards. Anyway, when people use their credit then, when they make a purchase, 70 percent of their purchase comes off of their trade credit and so they only have to pay in cash or check, you know, the remaining 30 percent. So overall, it's an extremely economical way for people to read, particularly if they're using their trade credit. Now, my inventory consists primarily of used books, but I do also carry new books, such as this one that I have. Most of the books on this display table are new books. Now, I've already said earlier that I did not go in business to compete directly against our bookstore that we already have here in town. I felt that we could complement each other. So the new books that I order in are not necessarily all the most recent bestsellers that that bookstore or maybe big box stores sell. The new books that I order in are things that I have learned maybe my customers are looking for or that are good sellers like World War II nonfiction, um, knitting books, you know, that type of thing. So that's the type of new book that I order in. However, when I order new books in, I work with certain vendors if I cannot get that book for a cost that I feel I can then go ahead and pass on a bargain to my customer, I won't buy it. Um, for me, the whole point of the store is, is um, bargain books. And so even my new books, are I sell those at a reduced rate so that they're more affordable for people. I cannot emphasize enough that everything you hear about the importance of customer service is true. I'm very careful myself and my employees about making sure that you greet each customer that comes through the door, asking them if there's something that you can help them with. I'm very careful not to hover. I personally don't like that type of thing, but all you have to do is just let the customer know that you are there for them if they need you. Also, be willing to go out of your way to answer questions for them. In my case, maybe order a book for them or watch for a book for them. And I think something that you always have to remember is that 
if you're not passionate about what you're doing, if you're not excited about it and happy about what you're doing, that's going to come through to your customer. So when you are thinking about starting a business, you want to make sure and choose something that you are passionate and excited about because that is definitely going to come through when you're talking to your customer. If you're bored with what you're doing, your customer is certainly going to be bored also. And chances are they're not going to frequent your store. The same thing is said about if you're having a bad day, you have to put that behind you. And that's irregardless of whether you have your own business or whether you're working for someone else. But certainly with your own business, you are your business. You are advertising. You're just like a billboard for your business. So you always have to leave your problems at home. Don't be grumpy. Always be happy. Always be very happy that they've come in the door. Some customers can be very trying. There's no, no doubt about that. But you have to treat them as though everyone is your best customer. The day is over, and I've locked the door. I don't very often get time to read, believe it or not, even though I own a bookstore. So I think this is a good time to sit down in one of my comfortable chairs, read a book. Thank you so much for visiting me at the Well Read Book in Hastings, Nebraska. Come in anytime. I'm happy to serve you. And uh, good luck if you decide to try a business of your own. Thanks. <laughs>